Welcome into MMA Live Extra alongside Brett Okamoto. My name is Todd Grisham. UFC 172 headline by John Jones versus Glover Teixeira for the light heavyweight championship of the world. And Brett, we weren't shocked that John Jones won, but by how easily he won. Yeah, this this was a stylistic matchup that favored John Jones the entire time. If Glover Teixeira was going to go out and shock the world on Saturday at UFC 172, he was going to have to show us something that he really hadn't shown us before. Just Glover Teixeira, the guy who kind of walks in, uses head movement, and looks to land those big punches. It's been effective so far in the UFC. It's not going to be effective against the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, John Jones. And we saw that. It was a one-sided fight start to finish. Jones getting the unanimous decision. Just how impressive was John Jones? Dana White called it Jones' most impressive performance ever. He did everything. He fought Glover on the inside. He fought Glover on the outside. He took Glover down, took the top position. Um, he was willing to stand in there and trade with him. If we didn't know it in the Gustafsson fight, we know it now. He has a chin and a half. Given who I was up against, I will I will agree that that was a pretty solid performance. You know, being able to take those punches um, from Glover, being able to fight uh, an amazing boxer in the close range distance, um, proving to myself that I have a great chin. Not that I want to do that on a regular basis. I'm happy with it. As for Glover Teixeira, he was taken to a local medical facility after the fight, had an injured shoulder and possibly a broken rib. John Jones, next up, a rematch of the 2013 Fight of the Year against Alexander Gustafson. What are your early thoughts on that contest? Well, I think it's a great fight. I think it could be the biggest fight of the year for the UFC when you look ahead at their pay-per-view schedule. George St. Pierre is gone. Anderson Silva is gone. Uh, they need a big fight to sell, and that is a potentially really big fight. The UFC is even thinking about taking that fight overseas, having it in Sweden, uh, taking it to the challenger's backyard. I think that that would be a big challenge for John Jones to go over there and fight Gustafson. Stylistically, uh, I think that the fight has the potential to look very different. And John Jones, people forget, man, this guy is still just 26 years old. He's still developing. I think he's going to come into that rematch with a lot of new tricks. It's going to be a completely different fight. Will it still be a close fight? Um, it's, it's difficult to say. I, I, I could definitely give Jones the edge to win it again, though. If it does take place in Sweden, it will happen about 4 a.m. local time. And Dana White said he wants to put it in a stadium in front of 50 or 60,000 people. After his victory over Glover Teixeira, I asked John Jones about his impending rematch with the Big Swede. You know, right now I'm just going to focus on uh, recovery and having fun with my family, and then uh, who I'll fight next will be, uh, you know, up in the air. So it will be Gustafson versus Jones next. We thought maybe somewhere down the line it would be Phil Davis getting a crack at the light heavyweight title, but that may have gone up in smoke on Saturday night as Davis got dominated by Anthony Johnson. Did you see this coming? No, I really didn't. I liked Davis in this fight quite a bit. I thought it was going to be a tough stylistic matchup for Anthony Johnson, who has fought at 205. It seems like he's sort of settled in and gotten comfortable there. But this was a, a different animal that he was fighting than Phil Davis. Getting back into the UFC, Anthony Johnson was fighting at 205 pounds. I thought that that moment was going to be too much for him. It seemed like it was a time for Phil Davis to shine, and he just didn't. He got his butt kicked for three rounds by Anthony Johnson. Johnson was just too athletic for him, defended all the takedowns. Phil could not get him down in this fight, and that was the biggest difference. One person that wasn't surprised by Anthony Johnson's performance, Anthony Johnson. It was fun. Uh, yeah, I've been working really hard on my cardio. Like I said, my team pushes me. I got, I got some of the best guys in the world, you know, to, to get me to the next level. I thought he was going to gas out midway through the second round, if not in the third. Not only did he not gas out, he looked like a, a, a veteran tonight. He took his time. He picked his punches, stuffed every takedown. Seven consecutive victories now for Anthony Johnson. He looked like a number one contender. When do you think he'll get his title shot? You know, I, I, obviously not right away. John Jones will be fighting Alexander Gustafson. Anthony Johnson, though, he deserves a big name. He's coming off a win over Phil Davis, who was ranked in the top five leading into this bout at UFC 172. I think Anthony Johnson is going to get the winner of Daniel Cormier facing Dan Henderson. That fight takes place at UFC 173 in May in Las Vegas. Dana White has kind of hinted that uh, the winner of that will be put on the shelf and wait for a title shot against John Jones or Alexander Gustafson. I tend to not believe him. I just don't think that you can put a guy on the shelf for that long. Johnson deserves a big fight like that. Uh, I would like to see him get it. I think Anthony Johnson facing the winner of Cormier Henderson is a good fight, and it's one that I kind of expect to be made. Anthony Johnson with the perhaps best overall performance at UFC 172 with Luke Rockhold not far behind. He made Tim Bosch tap, which is very difficult to do. Reverse triangle, baby. Uh, it's, uh, it's like my bread and butter, you know, uh, submission. I hit it all the time, and so I just, you know, it, it's hard to get the Kimura in, into play sometimes. The guy, When the guy knows the position well, he's going to fight to not give me that position. But, you know, I almost lost the triangle, regained it, and then got the position. Luke Rockhold saying immediately after his victory he'd like either Michael Bisping or Vitor Belfort next. 
What do you think he gets? Well, it won't be Vitor Belfort. Belfort just has too many issues going on. We don't know when we're going to see that guy next. When he comes back, the UFC has kind of hinted that he'll still get a title shot. Uh, Michael Bisping is a fine option. Bisping is actually coming off of a loss to Tim Kennedy, so it doesn't make a ton of sense. But I get why Rockhold wants the fight. He and, he and Bisping have exchanged words. Bisping is a big name. If the UFC does go in that direction, uh, I think that that's a fine fight, and I think it's a fight that Rockhold would probably look good in again. Luke Rockhold has some healing to do as well. Said he broke his toe in the first round against Tim Bosch Saturday night at UFC 172. The next big fight on the horizon for UFC, TJ Dillashaw versus Hinnom Burrell for the Bantamweight UFC title. For Brett Okamoto, I'm Todd Grisham. Thanks for watching MMA Live Extra.